Hello and welcome to another video. So in this case we are going to do a Corgi Toys Mercedes-Benz which I believe is the 304 S. So basically there was two models of this car, the 303 and the 304. So the 303 had a, was an open, uh, open top car and using the same casting they produced the 304 hard top. Now, as you can see in this uh, example, it's been um, repainted a couple of times. Um, over enthusiastically, I think is the word we're going to use here. But fair enough. I mean, like someone you know loved this enough to repaint it in uh, several colours, mostly white, red, and blue. I think there's some green on here as well. But originally, this had been the silver-plated uh, body and red hard top uh, which is probably the most common one of these I always think of when I, when I see them um, it has suspension uh, the tyres are shot to car tyres, they're all cracked um, although we do remove them with hot water they'll actually um, they'll get replaced so you can see the car's held together with two uh, rivets uh, and the underside has a bit of damage to the, uh, to the front um, but the paint's hiding that. It'll kind of show when we take the car apart. But you can see the base plate of the car's actually bent. So I think there's been some hammering at some point. And I think these were produced between 1958 and 1962, something like that. Um, I think they made the hard top longer. I'm not sure on that. The open, the open top car, um, I think you could over the driver and seats. Whereas obviously the, uh, the closed vehicle is, hasn't got any interior at all. Anyway, so we're going to do the usual uh, drilling out the rivets, which is very straightforward on this. Okay, and so let's have a look inside and see what we've got. Okay, so the base plates are uh, relatively unharmed by paint, but we will give it a bit of a paint later on just to freshen it up a bit. That is a really thick lump of paint on the front. The thickness of the paint on the, of the white paint across the car is actually uh, quite thick I and mean, there's a couple of millimetres at least. I think it's a bit deeper than that in places, with the red then adding another millimetre or two in places. Now you can see, um, it's not too well focused here, but the, the suspension of the car is basically like some bent bits of wire that kind of look like they've been taken off a, a biro <laughs> or something, or clothes pegs. Actually, I hadn't thought of that actually. Maybe they are clothes pegs, but that's what they look like. So the suspension on this car has actually got quite a lot of travel on it. This is quite interesting. Now, the other thing that's alarmed me is, is the white paint um, has obviously been thinned at some point a lot, and it is seeped in under the transparency. And so presumably that's going to have glued that to the uh, to the car. But also if they have thinned it down quite a bit, um, the turps or whatever it is that they might have used to thin the paint will have attacked the plastic. So what I'll probably do on this is I'm just not, not going to worry about trying to salvage this uh, transparency. I'll just order one rather than muck about with it. But um, I can also see it's also a little distorted, although it's, it's not too clear in this. You can sort of see there's like a sort of a weird fogging in it. I'm just putting the suspension parts away in plastic bags so I don't lose them. Incidentally, if you've ever wondered what the working surface I'm using is actually uh, an oil drip tray that you'd use to put under your car when you're doing work under your car so you don't get a mess everywhere. So the handy thing about it is it's got a uh, lip all the way around so nothing can roll off. As you can see, it's quite, you can see the silver on the inside is actually very nice and shiny still. But we've already know that we've lost chunks of it through body damage on the outside. Well, I don't think it's damaged the body, I think it's just knocked the, the plating off. But uh, that uh, transparency looks well and truly uh, messed up on there. Now you can't see it, in the, I don't think it shows up too well on camera, but when you could look at it by eye, you can see it's gone like kind of milky in the plastic itself. So I think something's happened there. As you can see, it's a good coating of red paint there, so um, well done to uh, little Tommy or whoever his name was who, who had this and made sure that it would be protected forever under all this paint. 
Okay, so I'm just using hot water here to pull the tyres off. Because uh, if I don't, they are going to split. Uh, but they are quite cracked, so... Yeah, I th I'll, pr I'll probably just replace them anyway. Eventually I'll get enough spare tyres of the same type to be able to do a whole car with them. But, uh, you never know. But for now, we'll just remove those. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to clean up the hubs and uh, get them all nice and shiny again using our rotary tool. I'm just using my uh, modelling forceps to just hold the wheel still so it doesn't spin whilst it's been uh, sanded, uh, sorry, polished up. Okay, so here I'm just trying to drill out the rivet that's holding the transparency in. Um, but it's not going to come out, it's well and truly glued. So now then what we'll do is we'll drill out the uh, rivet that's holding in the hard top and see if we can get that out without having to force anything. Okay, having dished them both out, um, it would appear that the thing's glued very solidly. I don't really want to force anything in case I break it. Although, to be honest, I think that transparency is trashed anyway. Um, so we may have to uh, resort to a bit of chemical treatment on this. But even doing a little bit of gentle prising, it's really not coming out. I have drilled, drilled those rivets out. So, okay, admittedly I did try a couple of taps, so I thought I'm not going to push my luck with it. So, uh, on to dangerous chemicals. Okay, so we have some hot water in a jar. This is outside on a metal tray, so if anything goes wrong, it's not going to do any harm to anything. And uh, we'll introduce the car into, this, into the water, and then we'll add some caustic soda. So all I'm doing is I'm just sprinkling in a few uh, grains at a time onto the car just to see how things start off. I'm not going to dump a whole load of caustic soda in, but I think in reality you use um, a few teaspoons or a tablespoon of caustic soda. Well, I tend to put it into a cap and then shake that into the water so you don't tip the whole bottle in by accident. And I'm just adding a bit as I go along just to see how much it takes to sort of get into react. Okay, as you can see, as you add some more caustic soda, you can see it starting to react and fizz. And uh, you can see already like paint being deposited on the bottom of the jar, mostly red. Um, but we shall just give this a little. We're going to put some more in. Just doing it, just in the focus there, because it was a bit dark, a bit of a dark day. As you can see, it's starting to resemble the opening title sequence of that Doctor Who film I was talking about in the last video. Um, so that might be where they got the idea for the visuals. Who knows? Anyway, I'll just put some more in. And obviously at this point you can't see anything going on, but you can see that the white paint is coming off now as well. Uh, and it's making everything going a bit orange. So okay, so basically you're not going to see anything else happen now until I come to uh, take this out. Okay, so once the caustic soda had done its job, the three components of the car fell apart. And you can see how uh, well glued in that paint was. And also, you, also, the other thing you notice with this car is how nicely the uh, hardtop roof fits into the body of the car. It's like a really nice fit. It's like very well made. Now, really speaking, the caustic soda doesn't really attack the uh, plastic. But if, it, if the reaction gets too hot, it can actually melt it. But it's not actually chemically doing the plastic any harm, because obviously the caustic soda comes in a plastic bottle. Um, obviously, I don't know if it's the right type of plastic, but as you can see, I knew already that there was, there was, a, there was an issue with the plastic before I got this out. So, uh, so I've already uh, ordered a replacement. The car's actually quite a nice casting. It's got a very detailed uh, logo for Mercedes and uh, the model number. And you can see all the bumpers and lights and what have you, and general detailing. So it's quite a nice little, quite a nice little car. It's not a very big car for a Corgi, I think. 
but it's quite a good looking one. Okay, now the caustic soda has removed the plating as well as the uh, as the most nearly all the paint. So we're just going to give the thing a run over with the Dremel, uh, sorry, fake Dremel from uh, Aldi or Lidl. Can't remember where I got it now. Um, I'm going to get this up to quite a nice shine, as you'll see. As you can see, it's shining up really well. There's something quite rewarding about getting a, a nice uh, shine, shiny finish on a car after it's been stripped and you're getting all the, the gunge and uh, bits of residual bits of paint off. One of the nice things about doing this is that using the caustic soda is that basically you're, apart from removing any loose debris and whatever, there's no grease or anything like that left on the car. So it's pretty well ready to paint. As you can see, it's very shiny straight out, straight out being uh, buffed up. But I will paint this because um, the, the polished natural metal look uh, won't last if he's not a main little tarnish. Now obviously we'll, tar we'll uh, uh, polish up the hard top as well and get in little bits of paint off. Just doing inside the, uh, the inside of the mouldings. So the whole car will come up quite nicely. Right, well you have to admit that is shiny, isn't it? Now again, like with, the, with these, because this is quite an old old car, really. I mean, this is like a late late fifties, possibly very early sixties uh, diecast car. So I don't really want to polish it to the point that it's like a complete mirror with no little tiny defects in it from its original casting. I kind of like those little blemishes that will come out of the mould. Okay, and I'm using uh, basically an industrial uh, silver paint, which apparently can be used on boats. Uh, and it says it does not require priming, so I'm just going to spray this on as is and see how it comes out. And it does cover very well, and it has um, initially it had quite large grains in the silver, which I thought mm, this isn't going to work too good because obviously I'm not plating the car, so it's not going to have that metallic, purely metallic -y mirror finish to it. Um, so this is more of a silver spray job, um, but initially the grains look quite large. But as it started to dry, the grains kind of got smaller. It's kind of kind of weird. It doesn't really show up on the camera, but um, it looked quite nice. Managed to keep my thumb clean as well. Okay, and we're going to paint the hard top using a, a automotive paint, um, which will give us our red hard top. And so we'll be trying to bring the car to look back as to how it did originally. Obviously I can't quite get the silver the same, but uh, I won't be too far away from it. Okay, so now using hot water, we've soaked some new, a new set of tyres in hot water to make them all nice and soft, and we're just going to press them on. And so that'll be basically uh, the base plate, which, sorry, I'd incidentally I had actually also painted black. Nice gloss black, so uh, it's kind of in line with its original look. Okay, so I'm going to use some silicon sealant to act as a glue to uh, hold in the new replacement transparency into the uh, into the red roof, red hard top. the hard top back onto the body of the car and to hold this in I'm going to use some super glue and as the super glue is really in contact with paint um, it's not going to be super super strong joints so that if at some point in the future someone wanted to take this apart again it would be quite easy to get it off okay so here I'm just putting the uh, springs the clothes peg springs back in their slots so they both point forward. And obviously when the car shells together, they will then come into contact with the axles of the car. Okay, we've just got to screw the base plate into position and we're ready to move on to the next stage.
Okay, so all that's left to do now is to apply the transfer onto the bonnet using water, which is slightly warm, and using a transfer. Duh, there you go. This, and we're going to use some microset as well, which we're going to apply to the car to help it stick on. We use a brush to spread it out. And I started off all nice and uh, organised, and I did something really stupid. I didn't trim the transfer before I put it in the water. So, there you go. It was late. I had a long day. <laughs> so I had to uh, do remedial action on that. So there you go, into the water. Now these transfers come on, uh, once they get wet, they were ready to slide off very quickly. And it was just as I was sliding it, I started testing the slide, I then realised I had to cut the surrounding film. So you'll see, so I'll have to like duck and do that off, off camera. Okay, so no one ever noticed the cut, and just as well really, because there was an awful lot of swearing. So here's the transfer cut down. I'm just sliding it off carefully onto the car. There you go. And then I'll just smooth that out with a brush to remove the bubbles. Because you always get a bubble appearing somewhere. And obviously, you know, you always take care not to move the transfer more around more than you have to because it can break. And if that happens, well, you just have to get another transfer. So anyway, so that's all done. So, shall we see what it looks like? Oh, I think that looks rather nice. It's come out quite well. I think my batteries and my turntable are going because it's not going quite as smoothly as it used to. Um, but anyway, so the car looks very nice. Um, uh, these silver Mercedes 300s weren't detailed. They didn't have um, headlights or indicators painted on them, as far as I can tell. Only the, uh, the open top in various colours, I think, had the tail lights painted. But anyway, I think that came out quite nicely. So, if you like what you've seen, please subscribe, leave a like, leave a comment one way or another, and um, hopefully I'll see you in another video soon. Okay, thank you, and goodbye.